good morning friends and welcome back to church how was your week i believe it was great and it was awesome wow welcome back hope you had a nice time in school settling down hope there was no issues okay i trust you are doing you i trust you're all doing well so right now go bring your friends bring your families everybody seated at home to come join you in today's service before we move to praise and worship, let's close our eyes as we say a word of prayer in Jesus' name. God will say thank you for today. Thank you for another week. Thank you for keeping mommy and daddy and our brothers and our sisters and our uncles and our aunties. Thank you, Jesus. As we move into the service, we ask that you will give us a simple heart to understand your word and to receive your word into our hearts. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's go into praise and worship. Let's make sure you dance, okay? When we come back, then we'll move into the word of God. Make sure you dance very well. Hi friends, how are you doing today? Tell the person next to you, say, you are looking good. You are not smiling, no. Tell that person, say, you are looking good. All right, put your hands together for Jesus right now and give him praise. Are you ready to dance? Let me see you move to the right, to the left. Come on, to the right, to the left. Come on, to the right, to the left. Come on, to the right. Say, children of God, children of God. Say yes, children of God. Children of God, will you shout hallelujah? Shout hallelujah to the Lord five times. Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. One more time. Say children of God, children of God, wonderful children, hey, and some children. Say beautiful children, will you shout hallelujah? Shout hallelujah to the Lord seven times. Go! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on now. We say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. Say, with our heart full of praise, be exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna in the highest. Let me see you dance. Let me see you dance. Come on, say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Come on. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With a heart full of praise. Yes, be exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna in the highest. Oh Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With a heart full of praise. Be exalted, oh Lord our God. Hosanna in the highest. Lift him up. Uh, come on. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift Jesus up, everybody lift him up. Everywhere you are, lift him up. Everybody lift him up. Oh, say, the Lord is good. I will lift him up. Ah, uh, say now. The Lord is good. I will lift him up. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, the Lord is good. I will lift him up. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, the Lord is good. I will lift him up. I am. One more time, say, the Lord is good. I will lift him up. I am. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up. I am. 
say we go there. Hail your name day by day. Everybody say say all the way, all the way. We go there. Welcome back. Hope we really danced and praised God. Hmm. Well, today's topic is choosing new possibilities. Choosing new possibilities. So I'm going to read from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. It says that you put off consigning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I'll read that again. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. And I want you to look at your Bible carefully. Okay, 22 says that you put off consigning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in righteousness and holiness. So before we move on, I want to look at our memory verse, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I want to say that after me. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and all things have become new. Hmm. Now, let's move on to today's topic. If anyone is in Christ, Jesus is a new creature. We were all born into sin. That's what the Bible taught us. We were all born into sin because Adam sinned. And you know, we're all from the lineage of Adam. But then Jesus came, which the Bible recorded as the last Adam. He came and he redeemed us from that sinful nature. So the Bible says, in sin did your mother conceive you. And we were born in sin. But then we grow up to a certain age and we know what is good and what is bad. And then we accept Jesus into our lives as our personal savior. Like we saw in our Bible test today, that we should put on the new man. 
we should put, do away with the old man and his sinful nature and his lusts. That means the old man has tendency to sin, which is the, the you, until you gave your life to Christ. We sin, we lie, we cheat. Some of us bully other children. You know, we do all sorts of unthinkable things. We steal from other kids. You might say, oh, I just fart. I didn't really steal. But that's stealing. You picked a pencil that doesn't belong to you. That's stealing. You picked a pen that does not belong to you. That's how it starts. You saw your friend's thing and you decided to hid it for weeks. You took your friend's notes just to get at him. Probably you were lazy copying your notes in class. And you picked your friend's note and took it home without telling your friend. And you knew it was the period of test. So children do this a lot. You know it's a period of test and you pick the note, you take it home to write or to read. And then after the test, you drop the note on the floor. That's wickedness. You know, exhibiting such attributes are the sinful nature which the devil gave to us, not God. You know, the Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes from God. Nothing bad comes from him. So if you start seeing some negative traits in you, you know it's from the devil. Every good thing comes from God. So the Bible is telling us, our text today is telling us that we should put away this old man and his sinful nature. Put them away. Stop lying. Stop stealing. Stop getting angry easily. Stop bullying other kids. You know, so many things that we do that are not what God asks us to do. And put on the new man, which our memory verse told us in 1 Corinthians 5, 17, that if anyone be in Christ, you come to church every day. You might say, oh, that's daddy and mommy's desire. If you leave me, I just prefer to be on the TV, just watch the TV, I'll be with my laptop or my tab and just enjoy my life. That's not the right way. And that's not the right thing to do. You might think you're young. Mm -hmm. Daddy and mommy is putting you in the right path. And they want you to learn to trust God for yourself when you grow up. That you don't become an adult that just cries over little things and start looking for daddy and mommy to correct things for you. No. So if anyone be in Christ, is a new creature. If you have not given your life to Christ, there's no problem. At the end of today's service, we're going to do that. Then you put on the new man. It says all things have passed away. Every negative lifestyle that you have, the lying, the cheating, whatever it is that you've been doing that doesn't please God, it passes away the moment you give your life to Christ. And all things becomes new. Everything becomes new. So how does this happen? It's not by magic. The moment you give your life to Christ, the devil might tempt you. He might tempt you to want to steal again. It happened to me when I was a young girl, you know. You give your life to Christ and say, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And the next minute you see yourself doing the same thing. You say, oh, God, forgive me. I said, I won't do that again. And the next day you see yourself doing the same thing again. We keep trying until we become fully grounded in Christ and know that it is not by our own power we can live without sin. Take notes. You cannot on your own fight to live a righteous life. No. It is the grace of God. So that's the reason why you have to accept Jesus into your life and tell the old man to go away. And the grace of God, the moment you accept Jesus Christ, you are setting grace into your heart. And the moment you accept grace, it gives you that grace and that enablement to be able to say no to sin. It gives you the grace to be able to say no to picking things that do not belong to you. It gives you the grace to be able to respect your parents, honor them. That's what Jesus does. So are we ready today to accept him into our lives? If you are not ready, you need to be ready. You just have to be ready because it's a whole new life and it's a life free from doubts and fear. 
accepting Jesus into your life will make your whole world brand new and makes everything, you know, <clears throat> if you've been the type picking things that doesn't belong to you, maybe you easily lost yours or people steal yours. The moment you accept Jesus into your heart, he start giving you the grace to be able to keep your things well and you don't lose them easily. It start making you know that, oh, before you leave, check your um, locker properly. Probably you left your pencil there. Probably left your pen there. It's the grace of God start helping you through things. You know, last week we talked about forgiveness. The grace of God start helping you to forgive easily because you've accepted him into your life as your Lord and your personal Savior. And he will wipe away all of your negative past by the blood of Jesus. It's that easy. As simple as that. So the moment you give your life to Christ, just make a decision today that I want to accept Jesus into my life. I don't want to tell lies anymore. I don't want to be rude to mommies and daddies, even my teachers in school. I don't want to take things that doesn't belong to me. I just want to live a righteous life. And boom, the Holy Ghost will come in. And then the Holy Ghost takes charge. And then he starts leading you. He starts helping you. Even when you fall, he'll be there to pick you up, to tell you, don't worry. Then you tell God, I'm sorry, so don't worry. Just The angel of the Lord will just pat your back, you know, and just tell you, don't do that again. And the moment you see something similar, he will give you the grace to say, remember the former thing. Remember, remember. Don't do it. Don't do it. Put it away. It's your former self. It's your former self. This is not you. The new you is in Christ Jesus. You are not supposed to pick what does not belong. You remember the way you picked this and you were crying. Do you want to cry again? So just leave it. And then you walk in that consciousness. And before you know it, you just become free as a bird in the hair. And everybody says, oh, do you know Jumoke? She's such a lovely girl. She's a good girl. And then we're free to live our life the way God wants us to live. And God will be pleased with you every day because God is always happy with his kids that do us what is right in his sight. So are we ready to take the prayers today? If you've not given your life to Christ, you need to do that now. Make a decision in your heart that you want him into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. That you want to love him. You want to know him more. Are we ready to pray? Now let's close our eyes as we pray. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and my personal Savior. All things will pass away today. I surrender my all to you. And I want grace in my heart. I want the grace to say no to sin. I don't want to take what does not belong to me anymore. I don't want to lie to mommies and my daddy. I don't want to bully anyone. I don't want to get angry easily. I just need you in my life. Come and take charge of my heart. I want the peace of God to reign in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Now this is what you do. After giving your life to Christ, you're expected to study God's word. Oh, boring. It's not boring. What do you do with your tabs at home? What do you do with your tabs? I know some of us own phones. What do you do with your phone? You download the Bible app into your phone, okay? And you start studying. Start from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, chapter 2. You could go to 1 Corinthians. You could study the books of the Bible we looked at today. And as you do that, you might think, oh, I'm just, I'm just reading. No, something is dropping into your heart. You keep sowing the word, you keep sowing the word, you keep sowing the word, and it keeps growing. It keeps growing, it keeps growing, until it grows to the extent that you just have this God nature of life. And that's what the new creature is all about. You just have the life of Christ in you. You just live freely for God. Okay? So it's not for you to give your life to Christ or say, oh, I made a new commitment with God. I've given my life to Christ, and I don't want to sin anymore. You don't annoy me. It's because I've given my life to Christ. You do that, it's a private thing, private commitment, but then we have to grow it. You don't leave prayers to daddies and mommies alone, no. You have to start praying. 
Commit your ways to God. As you go to school, tell God to help you through your day's activities. Ask your angels to be active and be alive with you. Tell the Holy Spirit to help you not to lie. And before you know it, it, it before, you, before you just realize it, it's no longer a prayer point for you anymore. You just walk and you just live that way. I hope we enjoyed today's service. And I hope you promise me to be good boys and good girls and not to pick what doesn't belong to you. Remember, you're a new creature. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 17. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things become new. Every of your past has been erased completely, clean slates before God. And it starts recording new things for you. Enjoy your new life in Christ. And I'll see you again next week, Sunday. Bye. Thank you.